Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for praying for Pastor Alex and the team. The Lord is doing great things in the Philippines. Hallelujah. Let's continue with the, uh, the word that the Lord has put in my heart today. Let's turn to Numbers chapter 6. These are familiar passages. This is the priestly blessing that the Lord after he spoke to Moses to give to Aaron in order to bless the children of Israel. So we, we start from here. The title of today's message is The Blessing of the Covenant-Keeping God. Starting in verse 22, Numbers chapter 6. Hallelujah. Reading from verse 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for walking among your people even today. Many times, we, Lord, we, we ask ourselves, why bother go to church on Sunday? Lord, because this is the gathering place of a people who know you, whose hearts you've filled, O oh God, with the glories of the living God. And together, Lord, before your presence, Lord, we simply, uh, Lord, bring out the praises of the one who is real and alive to us. Thank you, Lord, that you don't have to push us to come to church. Yes, it may grieve your heart for those who don't come. But, Lord, it always blesses the heart of the people who come and gather together with your people. Lord, I raise up my hand together with your people today to simply thank you. Thank you that you always bring us, Lord, before your presence. Lord, whether we feel it or not, Lord, by faith, we know that when two or three are gathered together, Lord, you are in the midst of your people to bless your people. So to, today, Lord, help me, hide me behind the cross to bring out your word, O oh God, so that your people may have one more reason to rejoice in you and to bless you in return. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, beloved, there are things that the Lord does that so often we take for granted. Like, for example, when the Lord reveals things to us in the studying of the Word, in our own private time with the Lord, in the church where uh, He opens up the Word of God, Many times we rejoice in the church, but then when we get out of the church, we oftentimes forget. That's why the Lord has to remind us again and again, so that we can always have a reason to rejoice in Him. Now, we've been talking about knowing God uh, for the past several weeks. That's why I, I, I say it again. I rejoice in this, because... There is no greater thing that God could ever give us than knowing Him. But how do we know Him? That's the question. You know, it's always good to ask questions, not, not to doubt God, but in order that the Lord may, may, uh, may give us the answer. And as He gives us the answer and show us the depths of His heart, that look, we, have, we, we, we rejoice. That is why when the, when the apostles walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever He revealed to them, it brought thrill to their hearts. It thrilled them. It excited them. It drew out the affection of God's people towards the Lord Jesus Christ. So that those who follow the Lord for any other reason than being uh, drawn to the person of Christ were filtered out. Sooner or later, just, just like what was shared last Sunday, sooner or later, uh, those who follow the Lord because of the miracles and signs of wonders were filtered out in John chapter 6. 
And the Lord said, they believed, uh, they, they did not actually believe in the belief that God required of us, a saving kind of belief that would cause them to be born again, but they believe in such a way for any for some other reasons other than trusting God for what He gives us, which is eternal life. Remember in John chapter 6, He said, He knew from the very beginning who, who did not believe in Him. And especially the one of the apostles, meaning Judas, who would betray him. So meaning that they were called disciples by the Lord, by, by the apostle John. Some of his disciples. Ju- uh, Judas was a primary example wherein he was used by God. He was called by the Lord Jesus Christ. He was given by the Father to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was sent out to preach the gospel, to do wonders, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. He was, he was actually sent out to minister. And yet, he was the one among the twelve who did not know God did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, beloved, regardless of what we do for the Lord, if it is not founded on an intimate relationship with God, everything else is nothing, and it profits us nothing. So we start from here. When we receive the blessing of it, we will go back to Numbers chapter 6. When we receive the blessing of eternal life from Him uh, at salvation, we are reminded of what he did for God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him I'm skipping believes in him will have everlasting life if everlasting life or eternal life is knowing God we are, we can paraphrase that verse for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will know God the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent Eternal life is knowing God. That is why when we begin to walk with Jesus, unlike the disciples, because the disciples, remember they were Jews. They believed there is only one God. And then Jesus came in the scene and he said, I am the Son of God. And that title is a divine title. It points to the divinity of Christ. It took Jesus to work on them three years so that at the end, even Thomas at the very end doubted. But what was his uh, reply to the Lord when he saw the, the nail prints of, in his hands and feet? What did he say? My Lord and my God. It was something impossible for a Jew to believe that this man is God himself. But they were persuaded They were persuaded the Lord was not discouraged in their unfaithfulness. The Lord was not discouraged in their sins even. Many of them stumbled and fell. Even Peter betrayed him. But he was not discouraged. Why was I not discouraged? Because Jesus said, I know the Father and the Father knows me. And the one who knows the Father, I will cause him, I will cause him to know, I will choose that person, that man or woman to whom I will reveal the Father. If you are a Christian, there's such a reason for rejoicing. Why did God choose you? Why did God choose me? Why do you have such desire to know God? It is for this reason. That's why even when the, the Lord when, when the Lord revealed this to me in such a way that you're so overwhelmed. And that is just a measure of what probably the apostles uh, experienced in the presence of God. They were so overwhelmed by the revelation of who Jesus was. Even Peter when he saw Jesus command the storm to stop. He said, Lord get away from me for I am a sinful man. I don't deserve this. And it is this kind of work of God that He continues with us every day. That's why I shared last week, whatever place you are in, it's always the bottom line of the dealing of God that you may know me. That you may know in this place where you could not learn of me in any other place. I have brought you here. I have brought you to where you are. That you may know me in a way that you'd never know me anywhere. 
In my wisdom, I have chosen everything that is happening in your life. Because the very purpose of that is for me to unveil your heart. To unveil my heart. That my heart will be, will be like yours also. Meaning that our heart may be like His also. That as we know God, the desires of God becomes our own desire. What breaks the heart of God breaks ours too. What offends God offends us too. Amen. And this is the invitation. That's why they were so overwhelmed by the revelation of who God is. That's why when Jesus rose from the dead, that was the seal of what they believed in. That was the, it put a seal in their trusting Jesus. They never were the same again. After Jesus rose from the dead, after, after even he met with the, with the disciples on the seashore, that's why the Lord promised, look Peter, you may have denied me, but I will so work in you that when the testing comes again to you, when you are facing death, when you face come face to face with death, I have so revealed myself to you that you will not deny me. My work would have been so complete in you that you will willingly go to wherever you don't want to go. But because you love to go where you want where I want you to go, I will so keep you so that whatever comes against you, you will remain faithful to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That is why, that is why when the Lord says, My sheep hears my voice and they follow me. This is, this is it. You see, the shepherd is watching, Who are my sheep? The sheep who hears my voice, they follow me. That is why when he saw the disciples turning to him, coming back to him again and again and again and again, that was his rejoicing because the father was drawing the sheep towards him continually in their failures, in their luck, in their, in their sins. The, the Holy Spirit drew them, the father drew them to Jesus again and again. It was his rejoicing to see his sheep Hearing His voice and following, the, following Him. It is the same for us. Hallelujah. That is why when He promised Abraham, I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. Hallelujah to other nations. All people will be blessed because of you. Of course, the f- final fulfillment is in the Lord Jesus Christ. But here in Numbers chapter 6, it was given to a people who have failed God again and again and again. And here we begin to understand the depths of the love of God. Hallelujah. Beloved, even if I stop here, I know that if this is real to you, that's why I started with people coming to church. Because when God is real to you and me, nobody could push us to do things for Him. We spontaneously, out of the things that He does in our life, we spontaneously, feeling it or not, but by faith, we come simply to His presence rejoicing. I will be with my brothers and sisters rejoicing together with the Lord because He is worthy. There's nobody else worthy. I know whom I have believed. He is faithful. I don't understand what I am going through. But Jesus is faithful. Hallelujah. Jesus is good all the time. I have tasted and seen the faithfulness of my God. Whatever the world says, nobody, nobody can dissuade me from that God that I serve. Because I have tasted Him. I have experienced Him. Hallelujah. This is why this is the continuation. God wants, to un- wants His people to understand that His faithfulness cannot be broken by their sins, by their unbelief, by their disobedience towards God. And that is why this is the high priestly blessing. He gave it to Moses. Moses gave it to Aaron. You see the the pattern there? Let us go back again to verse 23. 
of num- 22 of Numbers chapter 6. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his son saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them. The Lord just simply, like I, I sense that the Lord stop there. Stop. Stop. Read it again. I began, Lord, I don't understand. I've read it uh, probably hundreds of times already. Stop again, stop, stop. And the Lord simply uh, arrested me in that, in that verse because, beloved, beloved, this is what it is. The Lord spoke. It is the Lord who has spoken. It came directly from the mouth of the Lord. It was passed on to Moses, then passed on to Aaron and his sons, but it came directly from the Lord. Hallelujah. The authority and truthfulness of these words do not change because it is God Himself who spoke to Moses. Hallelujah. This is spoken to a people. To Moses, to Aaron and his sons first, then to the people of Israel. Because God has been at work in revealing himself to them. Because the Lord is faithful to all his word. That, that, is, why, that, that, that is why, you know, we, we, we come in when the Lord speaks. We begin to understand that it is something that comes from his heart. And then when he speaks, he will also accomplish what he has spoken. Amen. That's why Jesus is the word of God. Hallelujah. In, in Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, the name by which he is called he is the word of God. The Lord speaks to us. The Lord speaks through his word. Whether we feel it or not, when we, when we hear the Lord speaks, it demands something from us. It demands obedience. It demands faith. It demands that we recognize that the one who speaks to us is not a man. It is God who speaks. Hallelujah. That's why in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It is this, really. John was was saying, look, God has spoken even before all of us were even created. He already spoke the Word. He even had envisioned us even before we came to be. He knew already what you and I even now are going through. Whatever we go through, the Lord already knew before. In eternity past, He already knew what we are going through this day. Hallelujah. That's why it is the Lord who speaks now. Look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 15. It is actually um, uh, God speaking to Moses. Now you shall speak to Him and put words in His mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with His mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as mouth to you, and you shall be to him as God. This is actually concerning Aaron. Amen? The Lord told Moses, you shall speak to him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be your mouth, and with his mouth I will teach you what, what, what you shall do. So what the Lord spoke to Moses, he spoke to Aaron. And whatever Moses spoke to Aaron, what it was itself the word of God. It did not change in its authority, in its power. It was spoken because it is something that was heard from directly from God Himself and spoken to Aaron. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Amen. So look at this. So in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, let's go there, starting from verse 18. I will raise up a prophet like you from among their brethren. I will put words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. And it shall be that whatever, whoever will not hear my words when he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Amen. What, what is this all about? 
Hallelujah. Because the, 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 it was the Lord actually who spoke to Moses. Amen? And, and this is really the way by which God uh, deals with us. He gives us a revelation of what is in His heart. He speaks the word to us and we speak out to others. Amen. And then he, he said that whatever the word that I speak, speak to others. Speak to the audience by which, uh, to whom I give to you. Because whatever I have spoken, I will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, look, look at, uh, uh, look at uh, Jeremiah. Uh, I, I'm just putting here uh, what, what, the, uh, what the Lord has put in my heart. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 to 10. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and their kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. See, because when the Lord speaks, He expects a response. Amen. Because that word, through that word, He will make things come to pass. Hallelujah. The, the, the beauty of this is such that, you know, the, uh, the, the glory of the Lord uh, the glory of the Lord is revealed through His Word that He speaks. Hallelujah. So that's why in Jeremiah uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 9 to 10, Then the Lord put forth uh, His hand and touched His mouth, and the Lord said to him, Behold, I have put words in your mouth. See, I have this day set over you nations and their kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Because the Lord actually was speaking to Moses' words so that it will be accomplished. Somebody has to be the spokesman for the Lord, at least in, this, in, the, in, this, uh, in these things, that when the Lord speaks, He uses people to speak. And this, He used Moses, He used Aaron in order to minister to the people of God, to bring them to the place where in the first place He wanted them to be in. Hallelujah. So, this is, this is really where, where God wants to, wants to bring all of us. That, the, that the, when the Lord speaks, we take it, even through other people, we take it as directly coming from the mouth of God. And that is our confidence. Hallelujah. And let's, turn, let's move forward to so verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. Where am I? Uh, and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Look at, look at this, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what the Lord uh, gave to most. The Lord bless you and keep you. This is actually the uh, the uh, what what we call the, uh, the the triple blessing of God. I can say that uh, in verse twenty four, the Lord here uh, will stand for the Father, and then in verse twenty five, the Lord the Lord here stands for uh, the the Son, and verse twenty six, the Lord stands for the Holy Spirit. Now let me let me break that down. Hallelujah. So look at what, what he says in verse 24. The Lord bless you 
and keep you. That word Lord, of course, is Jehovah. And uh, the word Jehovah sim- simply means um, it's the name of the covenant keeping God. Amen. And when the Lord says, the Lord bless you and keep you, it is the Father who blesses His people and promises to keep His people from the start to the end. Amen. So that, you know, He changes our response to Him. He works in our heart so that He changes, He, cha- he, he, he causes us to know Him more and more. He brings us to places and people so that we understand Him, we understand His ways. It, that is the way that He blesses us. And then He keeps us. He keeps us from going to the left or to the... He does not prevent us, but when we go to the left or to the right, He deals with us in a way that He draws us into Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so that when we, when we begin to, uh, to, uh, to uh, take note of that, our response to Him becomes uh, singular. Because He is the one who keeps us. We become more and more conscious of our experience that it is the Lord who keeps us on the right path. It is the Lord who keeps us faithful to Him. So He deals with us and exposes to us the things that would cause us to deny Him. But He straightens our path in order that we may be brought into that knowledge to the deeper knowledge of who He is. And that is how He keeps us. Hallelujah. Amen. And then He, look at, um, um, look at the, uh, the second, uh, second verse. The, verse 25. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hallelujah. To make his face shine, face uh, signifies the presence of the Lord. It signifies uh, somebody in front of the Lord, meaning it's face to face. It's, it, the Hebrew word is actually panim. Now, that word is used to understand this better. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, when he spoke first to Abraham. Genesis 17, starting with verse verse 1 and 2. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Where is... Where is uh, Panim there? Actually, it's embedded in that in that uh, verse in uh, in verse one. I am Almighty God. Walk before my face. Walk with your eyesight. Focus on who I am. That was that was the uh, the command of the Lord. So I am Almighty God. I am a God who can do anything and everything. Nothing is impossible with me. Walk in the knowledge of who I am. And then he says, and and be blameless. Hallelujah. And do not sin. And be faithful. Hallelujah. So that is why here, here we, we begin to understand that the Lord opens up our mind in order that we may behold Him, that we may see Him, that we may know Him. And uh, to the measure that we know Him, we become faithful to Him, yes, but we become like Him. We are changed by the knowledge of who God is. Amen. 
to the measure that we know God, to the measure that we see and behold God, we are changed according to what we see, what behold, what we behold, what we know about God. That is why we always say here from the pulpit, it's impossible for a man to be walking with God and to remain unchanged. It's impossible. That is how God prepares us for whatever He wants us to do. Remember, He is sending us out in order to touch those who don't know Him yet. He is touching our lives so that we will be a testimony of how great a God He is. We are a testimony of the loving kindness of God, of the power of God, of the faithfulness of God. We are a testimony of how God can take us out of the miry clay and change us and make us more and more like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why when He when 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 we come to examine all across the Bible, we begin to see that the God, that God, that whoever God encountered in the Bible were changed. They were changed. They did not remain the same. They were changed. They were uh, changing from glory to glory. Hallelujah. That's why the biblical story is about God speaking personally to His people. Who responds whether rightly or wrongly, but to those whom he opened his eyes, he, they began to change from glory to glory. That's why we're no longer surprised when the Lord brings us to places where we're tempted to doubt. We're tempted to stop in our walk. We're tempted to go back in our walk. Because as, as he sees us do that, he will deal with us in such a way in order that first to know him more. Hallelujah. And then to put our, to make our faith bigger than it was before. To strengthen our faith. Because as we know Him, we trust Him more. As we know Him, we obey Him according to how we know Him. Amen. And then as we know Him, we are changed according to the way that we know Him. That's why the man or a woman who has known the depth of the forgiveness of God will come back to Him changed and is thankful to Him and give glory to Him. Lord, I am no longer the same. This is about You. You have been working in my heart so that as You move me from one place to another, You enable me by how? By the power of knowing You. Hallelujah. That's why when God deals with us, He demands a response. He expects a response because God's dealings with us are personal. Intensely personal. No bypass in His personal dealing with us. Because He alone knows whether how, how, how many degrees we have veered to the left or to the right. And He is the only one who can fix our walk, who can fix our sight, our gaze of Him, who can fix the attitudes of our own heart, who can fix our vision of who He is. He alone is the only one. That's why when He reveals Himself, He demands belief. When He reveals Himself to us, He demands that we believe Him, whether we understand Him completely or not. And He asked His disciples, Will you also go away? Peter said, the rest of his disciples, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? We do not understand you right now, but to whom shall we go? Where, Where else? Where else shall we go? You alone have the words of everlasting life. That's why when the Lord commands, the response is obedience. But he does not just command and then he expects obedience he commands but he so works in our heart that we may respond in obedience how many can say amen hallelujah sometimes we, the lord the lord actually brings us to the same situation over and over and over and over and over again he does not lose patience because he commits himself to changing us amen that's how, that's how we know how merciful He is. How tender-hearted is our God. How faithful is our God. That when He begins to do a good work in us, He plans to finish it. He actually finishes the work in us. Amen. 
when he commands, he obeys. If we see in his word, for example, parables, he wants us to find ourselves in the parables and apply it to our own lives. If God expresses ex- uh, affection to us, what is the demand there? He actually expects us to reciprocate that affection. That's why a man who truly knows the love of God will reciprocate that affection. Amen? You say, no, it's not about feelings. Yes, it's not about primarily feelings. But the man who is so touched by God, you cannot help but feel emotions. In your emotion, you will be lost in your emotions. How many times have you ever been lost in your emotions? Just drowning, so to speak, on the revelation of who God is. How good He is to us. How faithful He is to us. I trust that everyone has experienced that. Hallelujah. And then, when God makes a promise, He demands that we respond in faith and trust in Him. Amen. He does not just leave us. Uh, now I make a promise, now, now, now trust me and believe me. No, he does, not, uh, he does not work that way. He works in our heart first to convince us by the way uh, we go through things and life so that at the end, we, He will give us all the reasons why we can trust Him with our life. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why when the disciples, when the disciples uh, met the Lord in such a way that His face shone upon them. Meaning that He revealed Himself more and more and more to them. They became more and more faithful to the Lord. Amen. All of them. All the disciples. The twelve disciples except Judas of course. All the disciples went to their death. Except John went to their death faithfully because they were so fully persuaded of what they have known God is or God was to them. It is the same for us. Amen. It is the same. The Lord is working in our hearts so that we will respond to Him by faith. That we, when He says something, we, our hearts are drawn to Him. But He does not leave us just uh, 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 just uh, by ourselves to obey Him. He has given us the Holy Spirit to obey Him. To make us faithful to Him. That is why, hallelujah, we can give thanks to God. Lord, time and time again, I have sh- you have shown how weak I am. How, how I fell short from the glory of who you are. But Lord, the more you, you come back to me, the more you, you cause me to come back to you. Lord, I know how you would raise me up. I have experienced the joy of your mercy. I have experienced the joy of you touching me again and again and again until I am fully persuaded that the best thing in life that can ever happen to me is to walk faithfully with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why it says there, I am Almighty God. I can do anything and everything. Walk before my face. Walk with understanding that I am with you always. Walk with the understanding that I am never leaving you nor forsaking you. I won't ever leave you nor forsake you at any time regardless of how you feel. Regardless of your situation, regardless of what you're going through, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. And then he says, be blameless. He said, look, trust me because I can be trusted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust that you can relate this in your own personal experience. That's why what we're going through sometimes are so overwhelming. It is so overwhelming many, many times. But the Lord said, I will make my face shine upon you. Hallelujah. I will see to it that even if you you fail me, I will never fail you. Because I will make my face shine upon you. The darker your situation is, the brighter would be the shining of my face. 
the more glorious it will be to you. The greater you are in the depths of your failures and your sin, the more significant, the more glorious is my encounter is your encounter with me. Because I will show you how far different I am to you. But in the, that difference, I want you to become more and more like me as you faithfully follow me wherever I am leading you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what Abraham prayed? Because this was really uh, uh, something that uh, I believe that so overwhelmed Abraham because of the promise that God uh, made to him. It so overwhelmed him. But he said, look Lord, in Genesis 17 uh, verse 18, he said, Abraham said to God, oh that Ishmael might live before you. Meaning that, that Ishmael may be before your presence. That your presence would be with Ishmael. But the Lord said, no. No, I will not bless Ishmael that way. Sarah will have a son. This was a year before uh, uh, Isaac was born. Sarah will have a son. And that son of promise. Because look, beloved, we are all uh, uh, indebted to the promises of God. He made such promises that it boggles the mind. May we understand how great are the promises of God to us. And Abraham, and God said, No, Sarah, your wife will bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. Isaac means laughter. Yes, he gives us joy. Yes, he gives us everything. But he adds more than just the joy. He adds laughter to our soul. Hallelujah. And he said, I will establish my covenant with him for our everlasting covenant. Beloved, if you are in Christ, the same promise he has given to Abraham applies to you and me. I will be everything to you. I will be everything you'll ever need me to be. I will not, I will not bless Isaac, uh, I will not bless uh, Ishmael because that is the product of your own effort to, to fulfill my word to you. I alone can fulfill my word to you. And Isaac is the son of promise, not the product of the works of men, but a product of my promise because I'm faithful to you, to my own promises to you. Regardless of where you come from, Jacob failed him, I, Abraham failed him sometime. Jacob failed him miserably, but his promises apply to Isaac and apply to Jacob as well. And it applies to us as well in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus our Lord. We see ourselves sometimes failing, but the Lord said, no, I will prove myself faithful to you. Beyond what you can ever imagine. Beyond what you can ever do or perform yourself. Because I alone can perform this. I will fulfill my promise to Abraham, to, to, to you Abraham. I will fulfill my promise to you not by your own efforts. But by the works of Almighty God. Because I can do anything and everything I want to do. So you trust me. Learn to trust me. Because what I have shown you. Hallelujah. What I have shown you will come to pass at my own time. In my own season that I will dictate. But it will surely come to pass. My covenant will be with you and with Isaac. The son of promise. Hallelujah. The Lord Make his face shine upon you. What a promise. You know how, what face means? Who God is. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ that we came to know who God is. To the measure that we know Christ. It's to the same measure that we become lost in Christ. As Jesus becomes brighter and brighter, the world grows strangely dim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul confirmed this word in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts... To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord 
make his face shine upon you and then be gracious to you. What is grace? We know that it's unmerited favor, of course, although it's more than that. But basically it is that. It is unmerited favor. We don't deserve anything. And yet God has chosen us to reveal himself to us, to reveal his son to us, that we may be transformed from glory to glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The blessing that God has given us, it's so much more than we can ask or even imagine. Because whatever revelation we receive from God, we are transformed by the things that we know about God. To the measure that it is revealed truly in our hearts, the love of God is revealed in our hearts. To the measure that is revealed to us, we can love others without expecting anything in return. Hallelujah. So we can love even the unlovable. Because the Lord teaches us, Lord, you love me. And to the measure that I personally, intimately know of your love. Now, Lord, I can love my wife. I can love my children. I can love, you can love your husband. You can love anybody, even the worst of all. Because it is the knowledge of the love of God that gives us the power to love. The kind of love that Jesus has for us. Beloved, it seems so easy to say this, but many times we have to go through. We have to go through times of doubts and failures so that we could see and behold the faithfulness of God, the grace of God to us. How many times have we failed God? I lost count how many times I failed God. But all, of, all I can tell you is this. He has proven himself to be faithful. He has been faithful to me. That is why he has been faithful when we sing that song. I can relate with that song. Because I know how faithful he has been to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll be gracious to you, he said. He'll be gracious to you. The grace of God is such that, you know, even the most unlovable were able to touch. Because, beloved, there are people who have yet to know God. And you and I have brothers and sisters. We have, if we are truly, all of us are truly born again. We have each other to be vessels to one another in the expression of that love. We are vessels of expression of that love. That is why in the church, people who have not learned about the workings of God are easily offended. Then they leave church because they never understood what it means to be a vessel of love. They expect people to be perfect to them. Beloved, many times unconsciously we expect people to be perfect in our relationship, in their relationship with us, so that when they fail us, we are offended. But the Lord said, Blessed are those who are not offended, who are not scandalized. Because of me. That you continue to love and to love and to love. You know of God. Whatever we know of God. He will give us the grace. If it is mercy that somebody needs to be merciful. What is that? To what? To love the guilty. Mercy is love for the guilty. So if your spouse is guilty, you love nonetheless. If your children is, are guilty... You love nonetheless. Because mercy is the love for the guilty. Have your parents failed you? You love them nonetheless. See? 
It's God working in us to be vessels by which He could touch people around us. Because look, we need people in order that, because Jesus, He does not need us, but He has chosen to use us in order to touch the lives of others. As the Lord has been gracious to us, we are given the favor of the Lord many times over. So we express that first to our wife, to our to husbands, to our children, because they are the closest neighbors to us. We practice that at home. We practice that in the family. We practice that also in the workplace. And then the Lord says, Lord, I will be with you. I will give you the power to be merciful to those who need mercy. To be merciful to those who have wronged you. To be merciful to those who have rejected you. And in this way, all of us in the church experience to be the hands and feet of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Lord will make His face. He will show you who He is. So that as we know Him, we can express that knowledge to everyone around us. If you are impatient, then learn to be patient. Because the Lord Jesus is patient. If you are unloving, then learn to be unloving. In what way? By not first seeking that people change around us, but by seeking God to change us. To ask God, Lord, show me your glory so that I will be like you. Show me who you are. Show me your kindness. Show me your mercy more and more. So that as I know your mercy, your kindness, your love, your patience, your loving kindness to me, then I can be an expression, an ex- a, a vessel of expression of that same thing. Hallelujah. This is really how God deals with us. It's the triple blessing of God. The Lord promised, the Lord make His face shine upon you. It's practically uh, the Lord is saying, I promise to show you my face. I promise to show you that in whatever situation you find yourself in, you will show, you will see my face. You will see how kind I am. You can see how loving I am. You can see how patient I am. And then express that to others. Be a vessel. But beloved, many times we also are asked to bear the consequences of our action. If it is good, you still bear the consequences of your action to reach out to those people whom you think God is sending you to. So that even if you are rejected in your heart, you would still love. Because Jesus loved even those who rejected him. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I trust that you're learning. I, I, I was kind of I was kind of flooded with the emotion as the Lord has, has spoken this to me. I don't know about you because I have seen in my life there are people who have hurt me the most. But it is when I put back my sword into its sheath that the Lord told me, now because you chose not to take vengeance. I will bring you to higher heights, to deeper depths than ever before. Because that way is your way to freedom. It's many times, I don't know about you, but many times you you, you kind of, you kind of uh, are drowning in the emotion of what God is revealing. He says, I will make my face shine upon you. And I will show you first how merciful I am to you. How gracious I am to you. So as you learn of my mercy and as you learn of my grace, now do likewise. Do likewise. That's why the people who call themselves Christians, who just simply... Are offended left and right but by what others do to them. You know that they need the grace to know, to know the mercy and forgiveness of God. And beloved, who will God use? You pray for them 
And many times, you yourself becomes the answer to your own prayer. Lord, make my wife kind, make my husband kind, make my children kind, make me... And then, then start with this. Be kind to your wife. Be kind to your husband. Be kind to your enemies. Then you will see and behold how great I am. Amen. Hallelujah. I trust for learning. And then the third one. Let's turn to Numbers chapter 6. Let's go back there. Hallelujah. You know, just this, just this uh, topic of about knowing, knowing the Lord. It's, ah, it's, it as uh, kind of it, it like a pendulum. I, I'm swayed back to, to to one extreme to the other. Sometimes I've cried out of my sin, Lord, I'm guilty, Lord, I'm guilty, Lord, I'm guilty. Then Lord, change me, change me, Lord, I don't have this, Lord, I don't have that. Then Lord, change me, show me who you are, enable me to be the vessel you want me to be. Hallelujah. And then look at uh, verse verse 14. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you. That word lift up is the same as make His face shine. So it's the same. Amen. That the Lord will what? Will show, lift up the countenance is to lift up His face. Amen. So Lord, show me who you are. Open my eyes, Lord. Hallelujah. And give you peace. Who is that? It's the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's primarily the work of the Holy Spirit to give us peace. Hallelujah. Peace actually means shalom, meaning complete, uh, completeness, soundness, uh, happy, or prosperous, or peace, of course. Because we are complete, we're whole. You know where I uh, was as I as I meditated on this. I I, uh, I remembered Isaiah twenty six verse three. You will keep him in perfect peace, because that perfect peace is shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah or Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Look at this: the ma- the one whose mind is focused on God. God will give him perfect peace. Not only peace, but perfect peace. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. What does he do? The kingdom of God is righteousness. He makes us right with God first. And as we are right with God, he floods our heart with a peace that surpasses understanding. Then with that peace, we have the joy. And we have, when we have the joy of the Lord, we are able to do because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why even in suffering, Paul found himself to be full of joy. Look at the letter of Paul to the Philippians. He was actually in prison. And yet, that is an epistle of joy. That in the midst of his suffering, he still had the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why the, 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 the Lord, I, 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 I interpret this as, as the Lord, the Holy Spirit, lift up his face upon you. May the Holy Spirit show you who God is. That he was, the, when Jesus was here on earth, he was never moved by the circumstance. He was not moved even by the needs of men. What moved Jesus is the word from the Father. Whenever the Father tells him something, that is what moved him. He was not moved even by the needs around him. He was moved only by the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we, we read the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Lord may, the Holy Spirit will lift up who Jesus is. 
will remind us what again and again, will bring us to the deeper knowledge of who Jesus is. So that as we see Jesus and understand how He dealt with people, how He dealt with, with sinners, how He dealt with, the, with those who have uh, come to believe in Him, His disciples, then we understand that, Lord, their experience is not different from our own. What, what the Lord did to them, the Lord also is able to do in and through us. Because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the Holy Spirit's work to open our eyes of understanding. We see Jesus. We behold Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And during my lowest periods in life, you know, who, who, I, I, he, what, the lowest period in my life, I tell you, the Lord used Pastor Alex. He opened this house for me to live. Nobody in the church knew that at the time. But He opened this house for me to live. And the Lord began to speak to me. There, I met the Lord in the house where even they, they still live now. I met the Lord. The Lord was so real. The presence of the Lord was so thick. I would never exchange that kind of experience. Going through hard times. Going through the dark times. Sometimes you, you just want to flee. Oh, that I would flee from this. But the Lord even, remember in Jeremiah 29, we always quote Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord has a plan for you. But we forget verse 4. I have sent you there. I have sent you to the land of captivity. Because I have plans for you. Wherever you are, it is the Lord who has sent you there. Rest in that. Because when you rest in that, Hallelujah. You begin to understand the peace of the Lord that surpasses understanding. You begin to experience the depths of the peace. Because when you have peace, you will have the joy. And beloved, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can go through the toughest of times, to the most painful of times, to the darkest of times. And yet the Lord will open your eyes to the glory, because His glory shines the brightest in the darkest of times. He will give you space. That's the work primarily of the Holy Spirit. Of course, the God that works in tandem, in unity. But primarily it is the work of the Holy Spirit. He brings us to an understanding what it means to rest in the Lord. He brings us to the understanding what it means to know the peace of Christ. That we cannot even begin to explain. Because it's just there. It holds us during our toughest times. He holds us when everything else is shaking. He gives us the light, the way in which we should go in the darkest of times. Because it is the peace that holds our heart in place. Hallelujah. We begin to understand now the beauty of it all. How God deals with us. So from the Father. Hallelujah. To the Son. The Lord. Father. Bless you. And keep you. He sends His Son. In order that we may see His face through the face of the Son. And then be gracious to us. That we will experience the unmerited favor of God. Though we may fail Him time and time again. We begin to understand the mercy of God. The forgiveness of God. The joy of having God as our God. Through the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit. Whatever the, Holy, the, the Lord Jesus Christ won at the cross. He applies it to our life. Whatever He won. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus who applies that to us it's the Holy Spirit when everything else is dark we begin to understand nothing is impossible with God because the work of the Holy Spirit is this righteousness peace and joy in Him That's why the prayer of Paul in Thessalonians, Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely. Of course, it's the Godhead 
who sanctifies us completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved blameless of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit who works peace in our heart will preserve you blameless, faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. He who calls you is faithful. He'll never fail you. He'll never fail me. Are you weak? He'll never fail you. Come in your weakness and He'll be your strength. Hallelujah. Have you wronged Him? Confess your sins because He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Hallelujah. Even when we are faithless, He remains faithful because He cannot deny Himself. Now let me end with the last verse. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. I will put my name. Jesus' name stands for the character of God. So when these triple blessings become reality to us, God will be seen in all of our lives. That we are being changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. And people would say, I see Jesus in you. Because the Lord himself will open their eyes to see Jesus in you. That's why it's not our work. It's the work of God. Because Jesus himself stood before the people and many rejected him. Why? Why? Because their hard hearts kept them from seeing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. I will put my name, meaning the character of God will be seen in you and in me. What a blessing. What a blessing. That in your toughest times, you know when the light shines the brightest? The light uh, shines the brightest when it is dark. Sorry, I over. It's already twelve fourteen. I'm carried away by, by what I'm sharing. <laughs> but let's end here. Let's uh, turn to Second uh, Corinthians chapter six, verse sixteen uh, to eighteen. We'll just end here. And what agreement has the temple of God with the idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, "I will dwell." In them and walk among them. When you were born again, the Lord has promised, you will be my dwelling place. Now stop there and begin to think about it. God himself dwells in you. God whom the heaven of heavens could not contain has chosen to dwell in you and me. It is the living God himself Dwelling in you and me. And it said, and walk among them. Though you may not see him, we may not see him. He is right there beside you. What are you going through? If only to encourage everyone, Jesus is sitting beside you. If there's nobody who can understand what you're going through, Jesus completely understands you and me. Then he said, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. He said, oh, this is mind-boggling. He said, I will be a father to you. You know, we, we don't have, many of us don't have a father who, whom we can actually see the, the beauty of Christ. Nonetheless, whether we have or we don't have, still, we have a Father in heaven whom we can behold every day. And he says, And you shall be my sons and daughters. What manner of love is this that he has called us children of God? He has loved you and me. That love cannot be broken That love is unfailing. That's why we sing the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. 
And then he says, Says the Lord Almighty. He is the one who can do anything and everything. Nothing is impossible with him. Where are you in your walk with God? Are you here? Are you there? Are you up? Are you down? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you are a child of God, He is faithful to bring you to the place wherein He will finish His work in you. He is faithful to bring you to the very end to which He wants to bring you and me. And He will bring you faultless, blameless before the Father with exceeding joy. Only God can make that promise. Beloved, He made that promise. And His promises cannot be broken. Not by our failures, not by our weakness, not by our sins, because His promises stands forever. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank You. Lord, I have shared my heart out, Lord. I thank You for Your Word. Now, Lord, do it to all of us, whatever we heard today. The blessing of a covenant-keeping God, hallelujah, when we enter into a covenant with you, that cannot be broken. Many covenants are broken, but you have provided for us a way to be faithful to you to the very end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Now Lord, cause us to rise up in faith. So that you may have your way. In every life that you have saved. In every life that you have put your eternal life. And every heart that you have changed. From a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. And for everyone who has a new spirit. And the Holy Spirit within. As a guarantee Lord. That your work. That whatever work you have started, you will bring to completion. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand.